Show on the SEMO ESPN Radio Sports Network. I have more to tell you. The Southeast Coaches Show airs every Tuesday at noon on ESPN 92.9 FM at 1220 AM. Live from Wings, etc. in Cape and Jackson. This is your chance to delve deep, deep into the Red Hawks football season with head coach Tom Montukowicz. Let's go live to Wings, etc. Let's go! Right here on the Cofell Distributing Coaches Show on SEMO ESPN. <laughs> Welcome in. It is the Colfell Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show, and we are at Wings, etc. in Jackson. So if you have not made your lunch plans already, make a U-turn. Head over here to Wings, etc. We've got you a seat saved here in Jackson, and it's going to be a fun show today because we're going to talk with former Jackson All-State quarterback Dante Vandeven, a Jackson native. So he will be joining us in the second half of the show. I know he's in class right now, so he's on his way over here. And make plans to uh, scan the menu when you get here. They've got the award-winning jumbo ring wings. Dine in or carry out if you're in a hurry, no problem. They have their full menu that's a lot more than just the wings. They've got their freshly made burgers, their wraps, subs, quesadillas, entree salads, and smoked ribs. Have I got your appetite going yet? They've got their appetizer lineup as well, including their ultimate nachos and their spicy deep-fried pickle spears. And if you look around, you see all of the high-def televisions always tuned into the best sports programming. They have the NFL ticket here on Sundays. So if you're looking for a place to watch that Rams game this Sunday with the Cleveland Browns, Wings, et cetera, is the place. And if you join us back in the uh, dining room area, we've got uh, highlights from the Red Hawks and the Eastern Kentucky football game from this past Saturday. Let's welcome in uh, head coach Tom Matukowicz. Uh, I, I, I don't know if they knew when you were coming, but uh, it seemed like you had your lunch in about uh, less than a minute after you pulled in here. Well, this is my first rodeo, so I actually called them in. Okay, so you called, called ahead. ahead of time. Yeah. Now, see, that's a pro move. Yeah. That is not a rookie move at all. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I don't know much about football right now, but I know how to get my food. Well, what uh, now? You you were you were eating on some wings from yeah. what I saw over here. Yeah, I'm a pretty regiment guy, so I only get ten medium wings and fries. Period. That's what I get here. That's it. So that's not a precursor when when Dante comes and you go back to the table, you won't have a second portion. No, nope, no. Nope. Okay, I'm sure he'll he'll uh, partake though. He's a big fan. Yeah, now he had class until noon, so he'll be joining us uh, in just a few minutes. But uh, his old stomping grounds over here, you had to you had to come uh, over into these parts to scout him and uh, recruit him. You bet. You know, Jackson's a, a, obviously a big part of our area and um, have been over here several times and uh, just enjoy the community and uh, just how big a deal uh, they make out of their schools here. You know, that's, I, I recruited around America. I mean, I've been about everywhere recruiting, and, and that's just uncommon uh, to have that kind of community spirit around their, their local high school programs is really a neat deal. And when you go to a Jackson home football game, it is almost always, without exception, standing room only. It's not like they only have a few hundred seats. I mean, it's, a, it's an event when the Indians play. You bet. It, it's the way it should be. Now let's talk about uh, the type of system that they ran at Jackson where you saw Dante and thought, okay, I think the way that this guy is playing in this system, we think it would be a good transition uh, to come over and play Division One and, and in our system. Yeah, so we, we watched him on film, uh, really liked what we had to see and, and told him, hey, you need to come to camp uh, so that we can see it live. You know, I'm not going to offer you $20,000 off of a huddle or YouTube video, you know, I want to test drive you. Everybody so can look pretty good in a YouTube video, you right? Bet. So he came over to camp and, and so he had a good workout. And then what we did is we finished camp with some competition one-on-ones and, uh, he killed it. And I just loved his demeanor, his ability to, uh, have poise in the heat of the moment. And so, uh, right after camp, uh, once he got back home, he called me and we offered him. What's that transition like between offering somebody and then waiting to hear back? Because, you know, I know a lot of people, they want to they want to weigh their options. They want to yep. see, you know, who else is interested. And, uh, you know, and how's, what's that transition like as a coach or that period of time where you're kind of waiting to see what the, what the recruit has to say? 
Well, after I told him we're offering, I said, well, you know, this, this relationship's going to turn into, you know, you treat me like a high maintenance chick always bothering you. Uh, you know, and I'll be on Facebook or Twitter at night, felt like a 13 year old girl sending messages. Hey, how you doing? You know? Um, and so, uh, and then at some point, you know, I told him, Hey, you know, once we, we found out about you, I, I jumped out on you. Okay. And I want somebody to want us. Um, and, um, you know, if it strings out a long time, you know, that tells me that, that you're not that excited. And, and I was glad that he committed before we got into the actual visits in December and January. What about uh, the system that Brent Eckley runs, uh, put Dante in a position to utilize his strengths? Yeah. I mean, very similar. Uh, uh, coach Eckley's a great coach. Obviously, he offensively does a great job, and we run a very similar uh, style. And so uh, he's used to making all those throws. He's an athletic quarterback. Uh, he's used to reading coverages, and so it was a great fit. He wouldn't be playing now if he didn't come from that kind of system. Playing a true freshman at any position is always tough, uh, and, and I know that you aren't always comfortable. You'd wish that you wouldn't have to play true freshman. Yeah. We've talked about Stephen Williams. We'll talk more about him, uh, a linebacker that's getting a lot of reps now for you and is making an impact. What's the biggest challenge when you make a decision uh, to go with a true freshman who hasn't had a redshirt year, one year ago is playing high school football, especially making that decision at quarterback, which is the most important position? Well, you know, you don't have a crystal ball and you're not real sure, um, you know, through the season, uh, through fall camp, I just felt like we we're struggling at quarterback. And, and my wife will tell you some stories about me coming home even early in camp. But there's just something about Dante that um, you just kind of knew. And, um, you know, uh, we, we didn't make the move too soon. Just felt like it was the right time and we need to make that move. And um, he had gained all of the team's uh, respect. And so once that happened, you're not real sure how it's going to go down because once you go there, there's no turning back. Um, and so I thought we'd have a lot more growing pains than we actually have with him. I think he's got a cool name for a, a quarterback, yeah. Dante. That that works. Yeah, no one can pronounce his last name when you hear it on, on ESPN or anything, but uh, I'm with you. He's got a lot of swag, you know what I'm saying? He's not a normal individual. I, I love that about him, too, is the fact that he was a really talented uh, music, uh, musician as far as playing and vocals. And, um, you know, he's got tremendous faith, which is, you know, just he's just got a guy. He's just not the normal 19-year-old. Um, he's, uh, been around, seen a lot of life and, uh, the pressure that Jackson, even at Jackson is, is pretty heated pressure. They'll, they'll let you know when you're, you're not very good. And so I like the fact that he, he comes from that kind of a program. Yeah, his family goes to my church, Cape first. So, okay. Have you seen him? Have you seen him get it on, on the vocals or the instruments? Uh, I have not, but, uh, we can send him a text message to make sure he brings something here so he can perform. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be excited that I brought that up. 6'2", <laughs> uh, 190, how would you rate his size? Uh, pretty good size for a quarterback? He's right there on the edge. Uh, he's not 190. Um, he's probably more like 184, 183. Um, and so he needs to get a lot bigger. Um, I make him wear sleeves so I don't have to look at his little arms. <laughs> Um, I'm sure he appreciates that. Yeah, so he needs to get, you know, he needs a, a really good weight room. Um, so at least when it gets off the bus, you don't look at toothpicks hanging from his shoulders, you know. He got some muscles. That, that's that's kind of what uh, what we heard you say early on with uh, Paul McRoberts. Hey, we want to see you get in the weight room yeah. just a little bit more, and he has. Yeah, he has. And, and that's the thing that, you know, just people don't realize the weight room will make you a better player, but more importantly, uh, more, what happens more than any of it is the fact that it allows you to stay healthy. You know, when you're in an awkward position, you get hit, the strength and, and your core strength will, um, hold it all together. And that, that's really what I've been holding my breath on is, is, is Dante takes that one shot, you know, is he going to get up? Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's no different than Tay Bender takes one and, and he was out, and so that's that's a reality of Division One football. And you had to probably be a little more apprehensive considering the team that you had just played this past Saturday. Nobody gets to the quarterback 
any better than yeah. Eastern Kentucky. And their defensive end, Noah Spence, who was transferred from Ohio State, a couple of failed drug tests there, so he dropped down and transferred. And he wasn't just the guy at Ohio State. He was first team all Big Ten. I mean, it, it you know, in the Big Ten, he was pretty much unblockable at times. He's he's yep. really unblockable at our level. Yep. I mean, he is uh, Paul McRoberts at DN, dominating. You just can't do much with uh, force. And, uh, you know, so it was baptism by fire a little bit. And I know, I know it was, you know, he's moving fast out there. And it wasn't that he was just lining up uh, at one side. They were moving him around. Yep. Yep. They were trying to get good matchups. And, you know, we weren't able to get the run game going, which caused a lot of uh, third longs, which is not what you want to be in. You, you know, get back there quick and throw it. But with third and 10, you got to let the receivers get down the field long enough. And that that's what they needed. And they were able to get to Dante several times. That's the thing with Dante. That's probably as little time as he has had really to set up in the pocket or make a decision, uh, you know, to try and throw the ball. And it was almost impossible to get the ball downfield. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, those great teachable moments in there and you're glad that uh, those popped up on film and, and we can all get better from them. And as far as uh, the running game goes, uh, this may be, now we haven't seen Jacksonville state yet, but uh, I, boy, it's tough to imagine that you're going to play a better defense against the run than you just saw on Saturday. Yeah, they were they were outstanding and it was the best uh FCS team we've played since I've been here. Um just no holes. They're they're big uh in the D line but athletic on the the edges there to pass rush and just you know it's gonna make you work for everything you got. Twenty seven to ten the final at Hawk Stadium on Saturday. It's a 10-10 game at halftime you came out slinging it to Paul McRoberts. I mean you immediately got him involved in a football game, not just uh, at the wide receiver position. Here's Eastern Kentucky lining up the punt, and here comes Paul McRoberts out. He'd never returned a punt for Southeast, and his first punt return goes 29 yards, and everybody's yeah. going, this is great. Yeah. You know, we're again, you're careful there because you don't want to get him injured. And so, uh, you know, a lot of kick returners take shots, and so the punt return's a little safer. Um, and so um, – we got him back there and, you know, we're only going to get four more games with the kid. And so let, let's let him do everything he can and, and help us win football games. Do you think you surprised him uh, when you first came out? Uh, you, you take your drive. Uh, it goes nine plays or 11 plays down the field, five minutes, 48 seconds. And Paul, you really got him involved and they had a hard time really keeping up with him. Yeah, the game plan was, you know, those were all run pass options. And so if they were playing off of Paul, it was just deal a ball right now. And that's a run to us, you know. Yeah. Um, and so uh, they were just taking away deep balls. So we were able to flip it out there, loosen things up. And, and we have a, a really good first half doing that. And then it was, okay, let's see if your guy can go up and fight with our guy. And Paul McRoberts, a leaping catch in the end zone uh, for his 26th career touchdown to tie Willie Ponder's school record. Yeah, the the Miami Dolphins scout was in this morning, and, and he's watching that play and, uh, you know, got his attention. What about uh, what about the adjustments that they made? Because at halftime, you had to feel pretty good. It's a 10-10 football game. you got a top 15 team in the country in here, and you're all square after one half of football. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we come in and, and felt like we got to try and do the same thing uh, and get it to a, a one possession game. And so what they did was they adjusted and, and just pressed them all. Um, and so there was no uh, throws that we could throw right now. And so everything had to be uh, hang on to the football and just got behind the chains and, and then waiting for them to get open and we got sacked. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday, Eastern Kentucky goes down to Jacksonville State. Uh, that That's going to be a heck of a, a football game. And I don't know how much you've seen Jacksonville State on film yet. Have, have you seen no, much video of them? I haven't seen them at all. Okay. Well, they're the number one team of the nation, yeah. but uh, at least – to this point in the season, that ought to be the game of the year in our conference. For sure. I mean, if you look, base it on last year, uh, you know, I think Eastern Kentucky is quite a bit better um, than what Jacksonville State was last year. Um, but we'll see what they look like this year. Boy, the one thing where they've really 
taken a step forward is a quarterback. Benny Coney, uh, boy, he looks yeah. a lot improved from where he was a year ago. We saw his numbers coming in, but then just to watch him firsthand, he's a guy that if he decides to take off, he's big enough where arm tackles aren't going to work. Yes. And he was extremely accurate throwing the football. Yeah. I mean, you, when you go from a first year starter to a second year starter, you just can't express how much different that is and 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 how much better that kid is because of the experience that he had and that's what we got to get Dante to do you know see if we can get him in the 200s and so when that arm tackle doesn't work anymore um you know just like Coley it was it was hard to get him down and you look at uh, Coley just one of them of the drop down transfers I mean they gave him a full ride at the University of Cincinnati Adam Lane who is really their third string running back uh, scored their rushing touchdown. He's at the University of Florida last year and was the MVP of the Birmingham Bowl, and he's third string on this team. Yeah, yeah they they uh, they got a lot of good players. I think what they've had is they've been able they've been consistently good. You know, their name has been in the top twenty fives enough that they were able to get some of those uh, drop down guys, and um, you know, really impact type players. And uh, they've pumped a lot of money into their football program. They were hoping uh, to get a bid to the Sun Belt Conference. They wanted to move yep. up to 1A football, to uh, FBS football, and the bid actually went to Coastal Carolina. So that was a hit for them. But that that shows you that they're they're looking really to to improve their their football situation. I know they're they're pumping few million dollars into their stadium yeah. they're really trying to upgrade facilities i mean this is this is one of the elite football programs in the country yeah you know i, I agree with you and i have a lot of respect for dean hood i know him uh and have known him for a long time and um he runs a program that we want to try and run here where guys aren't in trouble discipline program uh consistently good um which is what we're trying to uh, build and if you look at the game like there wasn't stupid penalties there wasn't turnovers there wasn't sloppy play uh you know that's that's the kind of football team that, that i want to have now you only scored 10 points but uh, again you took care of the football in this game that had that had to be a, a pleasing sight for you and dante uh no no picks yeah yeah and uh you know i think we're getting better i think if you judge it just on wins and losses or you just look at you score 10 points then that's a that's a real shallow look at it as coaches and people get in depth you look at a lot of other things and you can just tell that we're getting better more confident and um we just got to keep uh you know you got to embrace the process and, and come to work every day and try and get a little better and it'll eventually show and i like to listen to the opposing head coach and his thoughts prior to a game because they're looking at every piece of video that they can and then after the game, and Dean Hood was extremely complimentary of your program, thinks that you've taken a big step forward, thinks that you've got better players, better depth. I mean, here's a guy, coach of the year in the Ohio Valley Conference, two titles under his belt since he came to Eastern Kentucky. Here's a guy looking at your program and coming out and saying, hey, these guys are on the right path. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that. I, You know, he called me this morning, um, you know, and I'll just – they had one of their players uh, have a severe fracture in his hand and had to stay the night in the uh, in Cape. And our uh, athletic trainer, I don't know if you know Ben Fox, but uh, he does a great job and just went – Dean Hood went on and on about Ben and the care that, that Southeast Missouri gave that kid. Uh, and they, they left uh, Sunday morning back. Uh, to Kentucky and just had just a lot of great things to say and, and certainly about our program, but even, you know, guys don't ever get mentioned a lot of the support staff and, and Rachel and a lot of those people are here today, but, uh, man, there's just a lot of really, really good people in our athletic department. You know, and a tip of the hat to uh, Red Hawk Nation, uh, 7,500 at yeah. Hawk Stadium for the homecoming game. Yeah, I had several big recruits here, and they, they uh, kind of commented just about the energy and everything that was going on outside the stadium before the game and, and the parade, and there's just nothing like homecoming. And uh, on the sideline, uh, a lot of people that follow the program closely understand what you do, but for those that don't, uh, you actually have a camera on the sideline. You, you, you want to see total support and energy on the sideline at all times. 
How would you rate the sideline on Saturday? It's very good. Yeah, it, what it is is just judging all in. You know, you got a guy that ain't playing and got his damn hands in his pockets during the game. I want to know. You know what I mean? Like, you may not be throwing the winning touchdown, but you are you better be getting it on in there. You better be just as hungry for a post-game meal as, as Dante is what I tell him. And, and we all have roles, and everybody needs to, to do their role. I don't know if you're uh, if you're working on your leg strength or not, but I, I, I saw some separation, some lift from your feet to the ground with the flying chest bump with Alex Knight, your your terrific punter, the top punter in the OVC when he came off after a couple of uh, impressive punts. Yeah, I, you know, I consider myself a pretty athletic, you know, guy, you know. Um, but kidding, obviously. My wife and I got in an argument when we first uh, got married. She says she's faster than me. So we were going down I-44, and we pulled over. And I, I, let's race. So we r- raced down the shoulder of I-44, and and I had to l- let her know who was faster. And so uh, that's a little tidbit there. So I guess I am faster than my wife. I would have loved to have heard that 911 call. We got some crazy people on the side of Interstate 44 here. Yeah, I couldn't believe she actually thought that, you know. But you let it be known early who was wearing the the, the uh, faster pants. There we go. Yeah. yeah. I had the faster pants. Uh, so, in looking back at, first of all, did you get out of the game fairly healthy? I, I, we just we hate to talk about health, but uh, unfortunately, you've just been hit with this string of injuries. Four linemen uh, basically out for the season. Uh, your All American running back out for the season uh, into Michael Jackson, Adrian Davis, who was a freshman All American last year, wide receiver out for the season. Uh, so you've been battling injuries. Uh, they have it stacked up maybe to the exact numbers as last year, but still you've been put, hit pretty hard. Yeah, we came out pretty healthy. Um, Tremaine McCullough hyperextended his elbow, um, but uh, I think he'll be good. And so a lot of our guys are just just kind of wore out. You know, we've been doing this since August 5th, and, uh, you know, just need to take a breath and, and uh, try to get our bodies ready for this four-game, uh, you know, rest of the season is this a good time for bye week oh, yeah. for your football team yes very good time if you got the picket you always want it in october um you know right in the middle gives you time to evaluate some of your freshmen all of my staff is recruiting uh, got eight guys on the road right now um, and so gives you a chance to to get a head start in recruiting also how many uh recruits did you have uh, at hawk stadium on saturday uh, i think we ended up having 14. And so we, we invite guys every every week and, and had several uh, local guys, but also some out-of-state guys. How's the local recruiting going? I know specifically you're not allowed. The NCAA doesn't allow you to give specifics in terms of names. But uh, locally, you've brought in some guys, obviously, Dante, uh, you know, from Jackson. But uh, how has the recruiting gone locally? And what do you think about this particular class of upcoming players in southeast Missouri? Well, we, we want to make sure that everybody in Southeast Missouri knows that, you know, if you could play college football, we, we want Southeast to be the first look you have. And, you know, we've targeted several uh, kids early and uh, we're, uh, it's really strong. And so we'll just see how it finishes. All right. Uh, Jackson has a big football game Friday uh, against Viani. Uh, they played one epic game last year, and the reason, the biggest reason they won the game is because of Dante Vandevin. We will talk with Dante coming up in just a few minutes. What? Uh, give us a, a a good Dante Vandevin story before we we bring him uh, we bring him up here. Oh, he's man. got that hat on backwards, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I told you he's got some swag. Yeah. You know, he gets that gets that uh, no. Uh, mustache beard thing he's got going looks like he's omnish you know what i mean <laughs> but uh you know he he comes from good people he's got a, a phenomenal uh girlfriend that is very supportive and you know he's just got a lot of good people around him and the biggest thing is the the one thing good thing about my job is i get to see somebody like dante grow for four years and I could just tell you, you know, what you're looking at now won't be what it'll look like in four years. And, and we all need to enjoy this process because that, that's neat. What's the biggest thing that you've seen in his evolution from the 
time that you sent him out there on the field uh, at Indiana State through the second half uh, against Eastern Kentucky Saturday? Um, I think just patience. You know, he, he's done a better job in the pocket. Uh, things that we want to see him do is, is uh, you know, have more volume when he talks and communicates. You know, volume reflects confidence. If you're out there like a, a whispering around, it's because you're not a confident person. But if you're really, really vocal, it's because you know exactly what you want to do. And and so we want Dante to use his outside voice, not his inside voice. All right. We'll uh, we'll ask him to use his inside voice when we come back from this time out. Dante Vandevin, uh, the quarterback of the Red Hawks, will join us on the Colfeld Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show with Coach Tuke at Wings, etc. in Jackson after this on the SEMO ESPN Sports Radio Network. Going about Wings, etc. For society? No. Don't miss Rusillo and Cano every weekday at noon on SEMO ESPN. It is the Colfell Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show with Coach Duke. We are at Wings, etc. in Jackson. And we want to remind you that uh, the menu is large. The food is good. They've got a comfortable laid back atmosphere here at Wings, etc. Great food, great service. They've got their daily half pound lunch specials and the lunch specials start just six forty nine. They've got food and drink specials throughout the week, including their 59 cent wings on Mondays. And they've got a terrific kids' menu. My kids love it here. They have family-friendly video games in the dining room. They are open seven days a week, and they're late on the weekends because the games run late. Joe Pot or Joe Hobbs back here uh, is is looking around. Uh, I don't know what he's doing back there. He's uh, trying to get some some feedback on the terrific food. Oh, he's collecting money. That's what it is. All right, he's working with dollars. Uh, Dante Vanovan, the uh, Red Hawks quarterback, uh, is here. Now, you said uh, you, you did get your food order in before you mm -hmm. came up here and put the headset on. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely got some food. Um, 
came here a lot in high school. You know, it's an enjoyable place. I was going to say, you snatched your first rodeo oh, here. No, no. I've seen wings. Joe too many times, I feel like, now. So what's the go, go-to menu? You know, I always get wings. I mean, it's called wings, et cetera, for a reason. Um, they have good wings. Uh, I get tweener a lot, boneless. Now, when you say tweener, you're talking about the heat, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not It's not hot. It's not mild. It's in between. It's between. perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, they'll be uh, delivering those here pretty quick, so we won't keep you long because I know uh, you probably – do you have any more classes this afternoon? No, I, I'm lucky. I don't, actually. I do not. What class did you just have? Uh, health and nutrition. I'm talking about um, – uh, viruses and stuff that shouldn't be talked about to you know 18 year olds well it probably should be since it happens to most of us but. well i heard that uh, a couple of cases of influenza have been diagnosed by the health department type a and type b so it's probably the the right time to tell everybody make sure you wash your hands uh as we get ready for the uh, football game in two weeks mm -hmm. against tennessee tech you've got a friday evening uh, that's open uh, any chance you're going to be going to see that Jackson Viani football game on Friday night? Um, definitely. Uh, I, may, or I plan to talk to Coach Eckley soon, you know, get back with him. But uh, I still like to come back and, you know, watch the high school and see how they're doing. Um, I check in a lot, you know, with the team just to make sure they're on the right track, you know. The last three years, you have beaten Viani. I say you because uh, the Jackson Indians and you at quarterback – you have ended their season three years in a row. Last year, you're down 35 to three at halftime. Those games are over. Mm -hmm. Those are 32 point halftime deficits. You're not coming back winning that game. But the thing is, you did come back and win the game. Two touchdowns in the final 83 seconds. Uh, was that as wild a high school football game that you've ever been involved with? And does it even ramp it up more that it was a playoff football game? Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, at that point, I have time. Uh, we, a lot of us were getting down on ourselves. You know, we're thinking that the season's over by then. So a lot of us were not even ready to want to go back out there and play. But um, going out there and, you know, as we're scoring touchdown after touchdown, we kind of realize, hey, we may be able to win this game, you know. So um, great experience. Uh, I'm glad I got to do it at home, especially, you know, at the pit. You know, it was great atmosphere for it. Um, but, yeah, just – what I think is interesting is two years ago, you go to Viani and you play in a mud pit. Oh, uh, I mean, oh. it was just – it was a, an absolute slosh yeah. fest. And they had a grass surface at that point, mm -hmm. and their all-state running back is sliding around. He can't get any footing. Mm -hmm. You guys win the football game, and all the big-dollar donors for Viani all said after the game, this will never happen again to us. And within a matter of weeks, they had a brand new turf field right, at yeah. Viani. So you're going back. They're going to play on turf. Uh, what was that game like? Because uh, they had an all-state running back named Markel Smith who uh, committed to uh, the University of Iowa, and uh, you guys absolutely shut him down. Um, I've never been so cold in my life on a football field. Uh, being a quarterback, you're supposed to, you know, be able to grip the ball and throw it. And I, my hands were frozen half the time. So that game was really, really um, – really hard to keep control of the ball and just, you know, uh, it was a low scoring game if I remember correctly, yeah. but, uh, yeah, another, another great game that I can put in my history book, you know, but, um, it was nice to get the win there too. What was, uh, what was the transition, uh, as a freshman, you guys had great success on the freshman team and then all of a sudden you get thrown in as a starter, as a sophomore at the high school level, compare that to being thrown in as a starter at the Division One level as a freshman? Um, my first sophomore start, I started at uh, Columbia Hickman. And at the time, they were a pretty good team. And uh, just just the difference in size from freshman to sophomore ball in high school, I was I was a bit, you know, nervous. And it was, it was, it was very terrifying. Um, and then coming here, it was like the same thing all over again. So I just, you know, mentally prepare yourself, I guess. I don't know the best way of describing it, but – it's just scared being 180 and you're running around with, you know, kids that are 315 huge that those like land on you literally. And so, um, it, it's a bit, it's a bit different. Um, it's just something that I gotta, uh, get my weight up and, um, uh, on the off season, you know, work on that. Um, uh, other than that, though, I think right now I'm in a good position for the future. Dante Vanavin, Red Hawks quarterback, joining us, former uh, All-Stater at Jackson, two-time All-Stater. You accounted for 85 touchdowns your last two years in high school. That must have been an enjoyable offense 
to run because, uh, you know, everybody thinks that Brent Eckley's offenses are spread them out and sling it everywhere. You guys ran actually more than you threw by just a few percentage points. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's pretty balanced when it comes to offense. Uh, we did a lot of it. The run sets up the pass and the pass normally set up the run. So uh, it, it was it's really nice going from that and then also going from the from high school that what we did in high school to go into what we do now in college because it's fairly similar and it's it's really good that I got a like, that's almost a lead up on you know leg up on uh on other freshman quarterbacks or other freshmen or other quarterbacks because I'm I've been in that you know sort of offense so um not only does it help me you know mentally but physically too because you know I got the gist of it <clears throat> all right so here you are a senior in high school you get a scholarship offer to come to southeast every single high school player who's getting ready to go to college i'm sure thinks hey i'm gonna step in i'm gonna be the starter i'm gonna do how much does your does your mentality change from okay i can't wait to get there then you get on the practice field and you see the difference in size and speed of the game how much does your mentality change going from senior in high school where you're the all-state guy to coming in as a true freshman um really have to you have to take a step back and just become a follower instead of being a leader you know in high school being a senior quarterback you kind of lead and spread you know lead the team but um when you get to college you, you really have to just just fall in line do your job be a team player and that's what that was my main focus was is to get in learn the offense you know make sure i know what i'm doing out there on the field before i try and take over anything you know and uh things happened and i know i was blessed enough to get in and uh I'm, I'm glad I knew the plays. That's that was a that's a good thing to do. Um, yeah, but uh, always a plus when you know the plays. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, uh, but yeah, it's 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 a it's a, it's really for for a lot of freshmen they come and they think they're gonna you know outshine a lot of things. They they're not really well prepared to know what what's gonna happen. But um, in the first couple of weeks they realize you know what it's gonna be a long process. This whole college is a process. And then when you get in my situation, it's just. Uh, can't, can't really explain it. It's, it's weird. Dante Vanovan, Red Hawks quarterback, our guest. And, and then you get here and you see there's a guy who had a scholarship at Kansas State University and mm -hmm. Tay Bender. Uh, then you've got a guy who had a scholarship at Central Michigan University, uh, Alex Niznak. Other freshman quarterbacks who are on the roster. Uh, did you think at all, really, when practice was going on, that you were going to be the starting quarterback as early as you were? Uh, no, I did not, but I, I also prepared myself just, you know, I always got to be ready to go in. Um, I, I just want to learn the offense. You know, I wanted to learn from the seniors and the, the vets, you know, you know, been in the situations, you know, Alex has played in the big house, uh, Tay's played, you know, at K-State. So they know what it's like to play in college. And, uh, I just wanted to, you know, learn the ropes of everything and, uh, take it day by day. All right. What was your thought when, uh, coach Tuke said, okay, you're in at Indiana State. Not just uh, it's not just a, a road game. This mm -hmm. is a road game against a top 25 opponent. You're trailing in the football game. Uh, just one touchdown to that point. Uh, Tay Bender's long run, uh, and you are being asked to lead your team on some uh, some second half touchdown drives. What was the mentality going in? And did you have any inkling before the game that you might play in this one? Uh, no, uh, before the game, no inkling. Again, uh, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was weird. It was a weird situation. Tay, you know, threw a pick and got took back and, uh, coach Duke was actually standing like fairly close to me. He just turns around and points to me and says that you better get ready cause you're going in. And at that point I, I had a little panic attack, you know, and I, you know, I, I'm, I was, we were wearing white pants, but you know, it was all good down there. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just getting in the game, getting a couple of plays, going into it you know you, you gotta find yourself comfortable you gotta relax and um i'm glad i i could relax enough to, you know to finish the game but um you know you just gotta be mentally prepared and i was and i was physically prepared too so um i knew i knew going in onto the field that what i was going to do and what the game plan was and what i needed to do to get to you know play and throwing the ball to number one uh helps with, with a guy like paul mcroberts so you come in the game you lead the Red Hawks on three fourth quarter touchdown drives, including one with zero, zero time left on the clock when you hit Paul McRoberts for the touchdown before you went for two. 
what was going through your mind there before that final play where they they're they're lining up three players back on the goal line basically uh almost hail mary defense but i think you're only like 26 yards out so mm -hmm. it wasn't exactly a hail mary play yeah um just get the ball to paul he's a he's an nfl prospect you know he's an amazing player um i knew we we had a design play you know to get and really it just was get the ball to him make a good pass you know uh it was end all be all. If the ball gets picked, it doesn't matter. It's the last play of the game, you know. So I just stepped up, tried to make a good play, and uh, things went good for us, you know. And you guys were inches away on that two point conversion, uh, just uh, you know, right off the tip of of Paul's uh, fingertips. If he had, um, I don't know, if he had another biscuit for breakfast, he <laughs> may have been able to get to that ball. So then you're named the national freshman of the week. You're the OVC newcomer of the week. Uh, that had to feel pretty good to, to kind of see some recognition even though the team lost, but it had to feel good for you, give you a little confidence that mm -hmm. uh, what you did was recognized not only around the league, but around the country. Uh, yeah, it definitely is a big confidence booster uh, for me personally. Um, I didn't expect any of it, you know. Uh, I, I never expect, you know, awards or anything from any of that kind of stuff. But um, it, it definitely makes you feel, you know, like I did some good. All right, then your first conference start against Murray State. You guys win the football game. Uh, the defense was absolutely large in that game. How did that feel, going out and winning your first conference game? You know, on offense, uh, it's your job to go down and score the ball. And then on defense, you know, job to stop the ball. So it really helps when you have the defense to back you up on offense or to back the offense up and, you know, the offense to back the defense up. And uh, they just shown out that game, and they, they did a really good job of stopping the ball. And uh, they put us in a really good situation to score, and um, – that, that extremely helped us in the win. Boy, the last two weeks, the running game has kind of been taken away because you've got two premier defensive teams in Eastern Illinois, preseason nationally ranked, seven OVC titles since 2001, then Eastern Kentucky. Oh, by the way, they're ranked 14th. They've won 21 mm -hmm. OVC championships. How tough is it on a quarterback when the running game is really taken away? Um, it, it is tough to a point where you know you're going to have to start passing the ball. And um, really, that that's what we need, what we focused on all week, just you know, working on pass plays and working on uh, what gets open, what the defense coverage is and whatnot. But, um, you know, it, it, it's nice when you see Tremaine McCullough or Michael Jackson run, you know, 20 yards because it's kind of, you know, it takes a weight off your shoulder a little bit. But um, that's just uh, us offensively having to come to an execution point of we need to be able to pass the ball too, not only just run the ball. How – much did it help you early in the game the play calling where you were slinging the ball around and it looked like you know mm -hmm. the the plays that were called you're able to get the ball to paul it looked like it helped you get into a rhythm early in the football game and as a quarterback i would i would think that's something that you want to have mm -hmm. uh definitely uh what we did you know last saturday was really good starting off fast and um i think that had to do with us in the rhythm and uh just making short short game short yardage plays just getting you know chunking out down the field and um, it was quick passes, nothing huge, nothing, no bombs, nothing like that, you know. But the game plan was was set for short passes, whatnot, and getting Paul the ball helped too. I mean, he makes plays. But um, offensively, we just we we chugged down the field and got some points. All right, does McRoberts ever come up to you and say, "Just throw it up, I'll catch it"? He does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. And I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't blame him at all. What's it like playing playing with that guy? I mean, how, how much easier does it make your job? And, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, Coach Tuke says. He's like 7-11. He's always open. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, any ball that I, I can throw to him, you know, I, I, I'm i 100%, 99% sure he's going to catch it. So it's it's nice knowing that, you know, I can go through my reads and be like, okay, where's ball? And, you know, give him the ball. But, um, yeah. All right, you got some other guys too. Uh, Peter Lloyd, mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year, I mean, he was the guy that helped win the UT Martin game when Paul was sidelined with the broken foot. Darius Darden Box starting to come into his own as a receiver. Mm -hmm. Now, Tyler McLemore uh, is a guy that, uh, you know, has worked his way into the rotation. So you've got some other guys there. Yeah, um, all our wide receivers are very capable of making our big, big play game makers, you know. And uh, I think all of them work very hard especially Paul and especially Box and, you know, the starters that are out there right now. But um, I think they all come to a point of they know that if they don't get the ball, they're okay with that as long as we, you know, go down and score. But they also know that they get open. So it's, it's really nice being able to throw to them. Have you ever faced as much heat 
or pressure than you did from Eastern Kentucky in that second half. I mean, they that was a relentless pass rush. Yeah, um, they they did have a really good pass rush, and uh, it comes down to knowing where to throw the ball and on, where to throw the ball on time. And uh, offensive line, you know, they, they they were good pass rush defense, but you know, I could have gotten the ball out on certain plays, and people were open, so it was a little hand in hand. It wasn't them like the offensive line totally, and it wasn't me totally, but together it just created a little, you know. When you got a guy who was first team all Big Ten at Ohio State. Oh, by the way, Ohio State's the number one team in the country. Uh, Noah Spence, number nine, uh, going leading up or number eight, uh, leading up to the game. Uh, was that uh, a guy when you're in the football game, you're always kind of keeping one eye away? Now I got to know where this guy yeah. is at all time. Where is he lining up this time? Because he's that he's that much of a difference maker. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple plays where he, he did surprise me. And he's, he surprised us a lot of times, though. But um, there's one play where it was a read, and uh, I thought I kept it instead of pitching it when he looked like he was going to come up the field, and uh, he made me wrong definitely, and you know got me. And that, that, after that point, I was like, okay, that guy, I need to keep my eye on him, you know. Um, but yeah, def uh, pregame knowing your defense and knowing you know where they're from and what they're what what how, what they're good at is really important when it comes into the process of offense. So he was definitely a guy we kept our eye on. What's the hardest hit you've taken so far? Oh, hardest hit. Oh, um, I got targeted at EIU. And I just remember getting crumpled. I mean, every time I run the ball, I feel like I get hit super hard. I don't know. I feel like a rag doll out there. Wait, not much, but um, that's the good part news of it, is I guess. you keep bouncing up. That's that's the important thing. Yeah, I do, and you know, it hurts, but I bounce up. So the know. targeting thing, you take a shot to the head, then? Uh, I did. Yeah, I think you got ejected from the game. I don't know, but yeah. um, yeah, that that shot that that hurt a little bit, but. I mean, nothing. Nothing really hurts. It's just it's a big smack, I guess. Is what I should say. What uh, What is the thing that you have learned the most as you you've gone in against uh, Indiana State? You've started each game. Now you're in a bye week. What's the biggest thing you've learned being the starting quarterback so far? Uh, biggest thing is uh, mistakes will cost you. Um, uh, every game except the last, I threw an, an interception, and those interceptions were really big, either in the red zone or you know past the fifty uh, scoring chances. And um, as a quarterback, you know, you, you really do have to be perfect in everything you do. You have to be accuracy perfect every time. You know, your read's perfect every time. And I think that's one thing I need to work on as a quarterback is to mature more as a quarterback pretty much. You know, focus on uh, my skills is that in, in uh, that area. But um, that's pretty much the biggest thing that's really you know, challenged me. How tough is it for a freshman to be a leader, to get the respect of guys that may be upperclassmen or guys that have played a lot of Division One football, um, you really got to come out every day and just give it, give it your all. Um, you got to make plays too. You got to be recognized. You, you got to gain respect not just by vocally or saying you can do it, but you really got to go out and you know make plays and do stuff and know what you're doing. And I think that's the biggest thing. Just really getting close to the older guys and knowing what they like, knowing what, you know, just coming to an agreement and getting a connection with them really helps too. All right. Uh, so you are going to go to the uh, the Jackson Biani game yeah, Friday. Yeah, you bet. All right. Uh, you know, they've had trouble. They've ran through three quarterbacks since, you, since you're gone. They, they've rotated in three quarterbacks this year. Hey, they're, they're making stuff happen, you know, so proud of them. Cooper Callis, a sophomore. Uh, have you had a chance to interact with him much? Yeah. He'll uh, probably be the starter on Friday night. You know, great things I hear out of him. Uh He's going to be really good, you know, as he goes through high school. But uh, when uh, I was there and he was a freshman, he did really good things for the freshman team and for JV too. So I'm um, looking forward to watching him play soon. How about Jeremy Elliott, the wide receiver? Do, could you imagine at this point in the season he'd have 18 touchdown right. catches? Yeah, last year he really shone too for me. And, you know, Jeremy was a kid last year. I could just throw to him almost like a Paul, you know. But uh, he's making stuff happen too, you know, and uh, it's really nice to see. All right. Uh, you got a prediction on the final score Friday night? Uh, no score, but I, you know what? I got to stick with Jackson. I know they'll win it somehow. They always do. We always do. So. All right. Uh, we always uh, ask the guys if they've got a Twitter account. Are you on Twitter? Uh, I do. All yes. right. Let's let's hear it. Uh, I forgot what I don't. I mean, it should be just Dante Vandeven. I mean, if you look it up. Is that it? I'm pretty sure. There's no uh, underscores or anything like that. It, it may be good old Tay, but I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. All right. Well, we've taken forever here. All right. Let's type it in. Yeah. And on the left. Yeah, there you go. This one? No, that's this one? Right. Yes. Okay. It's just at Dante Vandeven. Yep. All right. Let's see how many followers you got. 
Oh, no. Do you tweet out on a regular basis? Man, 1,035, doing good. I'm, I'm getting there. All right, at Dante Vandevin. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get you a couple of followers. Okay, Best cool. of luck, and Thank I guess you. we'll see you Friday night at Biani. You bet. You bet. All you. right, that's Dante Vandevin, Red Hawks quarterback. We'll be back to wrap it up with Coach Took. After this, the Colfeld Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show on SEMO ESPN. Colfeld Distributing, Red Hawks Coaches Show. Final segment here, Wings, etc. in Jackson with Coach Tom Matukowicz by week. Uh, but that does not mean that uh, you guys are not working and chugging and game planning. Uh, what, what is different uh, in terms of preparation for a bye week versus game week? Well, I think every year is its separate year. Um, figure out where you're at. Um this year, I feel like, you know, our upperclassmen just need a break. And so we're practicing three days this week, lifting three days, and uh, we'll get some timing stuff, but really uh, going to work on our, our uh, guys that aren't in a 2 deep, our freshmen, our red shirts, and, and make sure that they're getting coached and, and worked on. And um, then we'll uh, get back on Sunday and uh, focus on Tennessee Tech. You know, sometimes during a bye week, maybe somebody has an injury. It's an extra week, so then they might be ready to go. Unfortunately, most of your injuries have been season yeah. enders, so it really doesn't matter. But uh, are there some guys that uh, really could benefit from, uh, you know, some time off? Well, I just feel like all of them, um, you know, Paul, uh, you know, Ryan Moore, just guys that have just really their bodies are, are taking a beating and they just need a break a little bit. I think even emotionally, you just need a day where you're not, you know, the stress and the pressure of install game plan. Here it comes. And, you know, just to take a breath, you know, because we've been doing this since August. When do you start taking a look at uh, Tennessee Tech, who <laughs> you talk about running through a gauntlet? Uh, they play Eastern Kentucky, get beat pretty handily, lose their quarterback. Then they go get waxed at Jacksonville State. Now they go to Eastern Illinois. Those are, those are the top three teams in the league, back to back to back. Yeah, and, and without their quarterback, you know, that, that's their biggest thing, and uh, their coach does a good job, and, and so hopefully uh, they'll they'll get, get things going against Eastern Illinois. Um, I think their quarterback, uh, they feel like they can get him back for our game. Of um, course. And, and they, you know, uh, you know, when they beat Murray State, that guy threw for a billion yards, and so I'm sure that's hard. I know, you know, it's just tough when you have injuries. 
and we'll talk more about it uh, next week. Uh, but it is the pink up game, and you will be uh, sporting the the pink jerseys uh, a week from Saturday. Yeah, we're excited about that. All of the jerseys are were purchased, and we're putting names on them now. And uh, we're bringing in some guest speakers this week. Today's our first one. Cindy Gannon is going to address our team and just talk about you know, uh, pink up and, and, you know, we want it to be more than just wearing a headband or something. You know, we, we really want to raise awareness. Uh, we want to just, you know, try to, um, just get our kids to understand that, that disease may be a little better. All right. That'll be the pink up game a week from Saturday. Red Hawks are idle. What do you, what do you do on a Saturday right in the middle of college football season when you're not coaching a college football game? I don't know. My wife's been looking at me. Uh, I think we need to get to this yard. We got some uh, stuff. It seems like growing everywhere in our yard. And so, so anyone uh, drives by Coach Tuke's house, you'll be out in the yard doing yard work. Yeah, yeah. Taking out trash and uh, doing what uh, my wife tells me to do. All right, that sounds like exciting stuff. Uh, that's Saturday at the Tuke household. Coach, thanks so much. We'll talk to you next week. All right, thank All you. All right, that's Coach Tuke. He'll be doing yard work on Saturday. Stay tuned. We've got the ESPN radio programming coming right up. And don't forget, uh, we've got playoff baseball tonight. It is game three between the Cubs and the Mets. That'll be at uh, 6 o'clock pregame on SEMO ESPN 1220. We've got Blues hockey tonight, 6.30 faceoff. The Blues have won four in a row and are in first place in the Western Conference. Take on the only undefeated team in the NHL, the Montreal Canadiens, 6.30 on SEMO ESPN 92.9 FM. So thanks to our chief engineer, Dean Field, here. Thanks to Coach Toot. Thanks to Dante Vandevin for joining us as well. ESPN Radio Programming is next. We'll talk to you next Tuesday from Wings on the Colfeld Distributing Red Hawks Coaches Show. ESPN Radio.